Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and you're tuned in to Madden 18 on EA Sports. Anticipation is mounting for today's game, and we've got two quarterbacks looking to make an impact. It's Cutler's Dolphins going up against Ryan's Falcons. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, thank you very much. We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League presented by EA Sports. A moment ago, here was the scene. The Falcons coming out from their tunnel to the roar of all the folks here in Atlanta. We're ready for football as these Falcons get set to match up with the Miami Dolphins. Hi again, everybody, alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and you know, now more than ever, it's a passing league. We know that, and as Larry hit onto the open, we've got a couple of great passers squaring off here this afternoon. And usually the discussion centers in on how they're going to compete against the opposite defense. But you and I had a nice little chat with one of these guys in this game, <laughs> and they did say, look, I'm always competing against the opposite quarterback. If I play better than he does, I think my team has an advantage. Makes the handshake afterwards a little sweeter, too. Cody Parkey now, ready to get this one started. And in front of a raucous crowd, this one is underway. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Out comes Matt Ryan of the Atlanta Falcons. Two interceptions in that loss to the Bills. So now the last two weeks, and we discussed this right here last week, Charles, but five interceptions over the previous two games for him. Yeah, none in the previous nine games he had played, including the playoffs of last season. Let's take it a step further. He threw seven interceptions the entire regular season last year. So right now, people seem to have drawn a bead on Matty Ice and what he's doing downfield, and they're ball hawking him in a big way. Now Ryan on first down. And his first look is incomplete. A look at Atlanta's starting lineup on offense. And in the backfield, Devontae Freeman, five rushing touchdowns for the first four games of the season. Charles, that leads the league. That absolutely doesn't surprise you either, does it? Because of his track record, right? If we go back to previous two seasons, 11 touchdowns each of the last two years, well on his way to surpassing that this year. And don't forget that extra element he has of being able to catch the ball in the backfield. Second and ten. It's Ryan again. And it's hauled in by Austin Hooper. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opens things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. Throwing now. Ryan on first down. And he will find his man on the outside. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And let's run through the Dolphins' defense. In 2016, Miami was 29th overall in total defense. Not a number that's going to excite them or one that they can hang their hat on. But what redeemed them last year was their third down defense. Fourth best in the NFL. And as we all know, that's the down that you really point to and target. Get off the field on third down. So we've got a second and five. To throw again is Ryan. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Austin Hooper, the tight end, was the intended target. And it's third and five. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. Yeah, it came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Ryan now off the bootleg. 
And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. Matt Bosher, seventh-year man from Miami, on to punt. Jakeem Grant back deep for Miami. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Off a tough performance where they were shut out. Here comes the Miami offense and Jay Cutler. So no points across the pond against New Orleans. And Cutler struggled too. I thought for a while he might climb up the bleachers and join you guys in the broadcast booth like he was supposed to. Yeah, no space left in the booth. He made a great decision deciding to play. And I don't blame him one bit, but he didn't expect these last two weeks. A combined 40-6 to six in losses to the Jets and the Saints. One in New York, one, of course, in London. And as you mentioned, the first time he's ever been shut out in a game. You know, that's 142 starts for Jay Cutler. Wow. Let's go. Green, 39. <laughs> now it's the Boise State alum, Jay Ajayi. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. And here now a look at the Dolphins' offensive unit. I know we don't like to get totally bogged down in numbers, but Miami was 24th in offense in 2016. Should not have been a surprise, though. Brand new coaching staff, brand new offense. Took a little while to get going, but by the end of the year, they were starting to look like a really potent attack. See if they stay on the ground for second down. gun it's Cutler and Thomas has it and he'll be brought down right at the 30 here it goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains many different ways to create space but on that play he did it with that big wide body of his didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play but it did what it was supposed to pick up a first down This is a giant. He takes this from the 30 to the 34. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Second down to the offense in search of six yards. From the shotgun, Cutler. He's going to float this one deep right side. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And here now, the defensive starters for Atlanta. The Atlanta Falcons defense of 2016 was ranked 25th, but don't get caught up in the numbers. The last eight or nine games of the season, things really started to click for head coach Dan Quinn, who really ran that defense based on what he had run in Seattle. And it really is predicated on speed, speed, speed. Every level of the defense, and Vic Beasley, their outside linebacker in his second season, had 15 and a half sacks and six forced fumbles, both which led the league. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. The Dolphins will send out the punter now. Back deep here, Andre Roberts. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. 
So out come the Falcons now. The last couple of drives have ended in punts. Maybe the crowd minds that, but you're a defensive guy. You're okay with a couple of punt drives. Listen, I'm the guy that loves a 0-0 pitch game all right, in baseball. I can handle that going into the seventh inning. I think the crowd, though, they want to see a little bit more excitement. Let's see if someone can break something free on offense and get going. Offense at a premium the last two drives. They'll run for the first time with Devontae Freeman. He's at the 50, 30, past the 20, 10, touchdown, Falcons. Devontae Freeman, an 80-yard touchdown, and the Falcons have taken the early lead. And with his speed, if he just finds the slightest crease, he can take it the distance like he did there. How about the leverage up front? Offensive line out leveraging the defensive front to create that space, that crease that he was looking for. And once he hits open field, he's going to be very difficult to catch and corral. Now Matt Bryant on for the point after. It's good, and that gives the Falcons a 7 to nothing lead. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Bosher to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And the Dolphins getting set to go here and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. here on first down and his throw here is incomplete Devontae Parker the intended receiver and now it's second down let's face it you can run the route tree as many times as you want get in sync practice it do all those things but once you get to game speed it doesn't always time up quite that well that one goes incomplete They'll run it now out of the gun. And an alley to run. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 12 yards there. The Dolphins have a first down. Ajayi last year, 1,272 yards, third most in a single season in Dolphin history. And he helped transform Miami into a playoff team in 2016. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Throwing here, Cutler. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 12 yards on back-to-back -back plays there, and that's another first down. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Single, 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 single. Right, here we go. 
from midfield now. Here's Cutler. Going deep here for Stills. It's caught inside the 25. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Absolutely zero surprise at that throw we just saw. I mean, Jay Cutler has a whip for an arm. He's had it since he won his state title at Heritage Hills High School in Southern Indiana. Where in Southern Indiana, though? Well, he's born in Santa Claus. How about that? That's pretty strong yeah. right there. Nearby to my hometown of Evansville. Bet you've never been there, have you? I have not been there, but I'm looking forward to being invited for a holiday You're cheer. You're invited. Put that on your bucket list. Thank you. First and 10, it's Cutler. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Great change up there on the route and got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. Well, the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside. Make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You run against a half of him. And the inside half, and he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. That's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, and defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. They stay on the ground again. It's a Jay. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. He lost two, and it brings up four. So the myth has been shattered. Every cornerback in the league is not just a cover corner. Some of them will stick their nose in there and make plays exactly as we just saw there. A big loss suffered by the offense after that nice tackle. Now Cody Parkey out to try the field goal. And Parkey's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So the drive stalls out, but they are able to put three points on the board. Yeah, just a yard or two shorter than an extra point. So no problems converting there. now following the made field goal to kick this one off. That'll be taken in the end zone. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And they'll take it out to the 25. Here comes the Falcon offense now as they get set to take over here. And they hit the home run last drive. One play on the ground all the way to the house. Now the defense, maybe they're expecting a run here. Partner, I love your description because when we talk about hitting the home run, we're usually thinking about a passing play, aren't we? Something in the air, deep ball. But how about them just taking it? Big time jaunt. Now if you're coming back out, now they've established this run game, the play action pass could very well be open. Off the bootleg, Ryan. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he takes this one just shy of midfield all the way to the 49. That one goes for 24 yards. All right, I'm doing my rudimentary math here. That's his third catch here in the first quarter. I don't know if it's just game plan or he's just finding his way open. And maybe a little of both. So here we go, first and 10 now. Right in, right. Right in, right. Hey, hey, hey. 
A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Cameron Wake in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Second down, Ryan. He completes it to Julio Jones. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Julio back-to-back -back all pro seasons. Last year, over 1,400 yards. Averaged over 100 yards per game. Tops in the NFL. And that's the stat that catches my eye. Over 100 yards per game. And you always hear about defenses saying, we can rotate, we can send people in his direction, we can do things to limit a wide receiver, yet Julio Jones averages over 100 per game. One of the most sensational stats I've seen in recent football. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. I think of Tevin Coleman as a really good combo back. He can run it. But in terms of being a third down back, I think he ranks with the best in the league. So good at leaking out of the backfield. Ryan finding him there for the Falcons first. And now a first down following that long game. the gun. It's Ryan. He hits his target. It's the tight end Toilolo. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pick up on first down. Hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. So they complete the pass and now they face a second down. It's Freeman, and he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. And here comes play number six on this drive. Freeman again, a first down carry. And he'll find his way down inside the 10 to the nine yard line. Two yards on the pickup there, it'll be second and eight. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands, they can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. On second down, Freeman. And he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Now it's Ryan. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Call it a three-yard game, and it'll be fourth down.
So on fourth down, off goes Matt Ryan, and on is another Matt, Matt Bryant. From the left hash, should be a fairly easy one here. And before we can get to the field goal try, time will run out on this first quarter of play. It's the Falcons with the early lead. This is the NFL on EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Falcons in possession to begin quarter number two. And they've got a decision to make here on fourth down and two. And the first play will be a field goal try. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And the 42-year-old veteran's kick is up and good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10-3. to It's good to be the kicker for the top offense in the NFL, and Matt Bryant was that in 2016. Led the league in scoring with 158 points. But boy, does Atlanta find him valuable. So dependable and clutch. And he's been valuable in this league for a while. Hard to believe he's been around since 2002. Here's Bosher to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And out come the Dolphins now. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point The kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Bash, <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> There's a handoff to Ajayi to begin the drive. Skirts by him at the 35. And he does take it in for the touchdown, but a flag on the field, and I don't think this is going to stand. Yeah, don't put the points on the board just yet. Ouch, could have been a game-tying touchdown. They'll have to hold on that at least for now. Ouch in a big way, like ripping the Band-Aid off there. Can they let the sting subside and come back and get it done? It's Williams. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. All right, here we go. Green 39. Green 39. Hot. Now it's Cutler. Oh, nearly picked. Almost intercepted, but he couldn't hang on, and it's third down. 
pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. the gun it's Cutler and he finds Julius Thomas and he's got the first down as he's up to the 45 yard line and call it a gain of 19 and it moves the chains and there's a completion to the tight end and look at the size of these players nowadays at that spot 6'4 six, 6'5 six, and up a lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Here we go now. Boom, landing. They'll run it now out of the gun. Ajayi escapes him. Showed the nice footwork and then hit and dropped shy of the 45. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Getting out a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Here's Cutler. The Fasano here brings it in. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though. Huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. The Dolphins on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Let's go! 319! Here's Cutler. He's got his man, that's Landry. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Dolphins first down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. Now whistles and a flag, and I believe a Dolphin got going a little early. False start, offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Still first down. And here comes play number six on this drive. Here we go now. Three and ah, three and now Cutler. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Grant. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A good pick up there of 20 yards. When the hitch route has run really well, that jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space, all you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage, and that's exactly what he got done there.
Play action. Cutler. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds. Incomplete. He was trying for his tight end, the veteran Anthony Fasano. And that'll bring up second down. We know about his arm strength. We're all impressed. We can't help but be when he, when he fires one. But that overthrow there, that's the thing we think that may be preventing him from being in the upper echelon of quarterbacks in the NFL. Just the overall accuracy. Yeah, I think that's, that's a big part of it. Overall accuracy and really lack of success in the playoffs. So for Jay Cutler, continuing to fire, trying to find a way to win more games. False start offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still second down. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. They run with Ajayi. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. They lost four there, and it's third down. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive. And normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, it looked like the offensive line let him down a little bit. Yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff him for a loss. The Dolphins on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and 19. Now Cutler looking to throw. Under pressure and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Dontari Poe in there to get him for a loss of three, and it'll be fourth down. I remember when I was a kid and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel so, oh. I, could pay the, so I could pay the proper price. Okay, how much were they? A dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good, and this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Heading back onto the field, here's a look at Devontae Freeman now. He's in his own second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has, and that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a thousand yard mark. I'm wondering since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games, maybe we need to up that a little. The drive will start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. Cameron Wake, one of three NFL players in the last decade to have 10 or more sacks at the age of 34 plus. The other two, Julius Peppers, John Abraham. He makes game-changing plays as well. Nine forced fumbles in the last two seasons. Again, they'll run with Freeman. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. The former Indiana Hoosier here, Tevin Coleman, and able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. 
That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. This is Freeman on first and 10. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Well, with the kind of half he's had, I think we can forgive him that run, right? Not every run's going to be a big play, is it? No, and also the blocking just wasn't there. No room to run. Yeah, defensively, they got to find a way to build on that because he's eating them alive in the first half. and the completion, but now they face third down. Partner, our parents always told us that relationships were going to be important in life. Taylor Gabriel knew Kyle Shanahan in Cleveland before he was the offensive coordinator in Atlanta. Boy, that payoff for the Falcons picking him up. And last year, he had more touchdowns, actually, than Julio Jones. He had seven. Jones had six. And good parental advice there, Mr. Davis. Ryan now to throw on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. And now a long one for Matt Bryant. He's hit from 62 in his career, but that was all the way back in 2006. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up. A live ball here, remember. Those really long field goals, when they are made, they are things of beauty. But there is a danger to getting them started, isn't there? Yeah, with that low drive, you've got to really keep it low to the ground, don't you, to get that distance. Yeah, hard to just pop it up in the air because otherwise it's not going to get there. So he's got to drive it low in order to have the distance, and that usually puts it in jeopardy, gives him a chance to block it, and everyone knows it on the other side. That's when you get your best jumpers on the other side of the field and try and get up and get it. for the Dolphins there as they've got themselves a first down. Well, so much for him being bottled up throughout the day. Finally finds a way to break through and get a really nice gain. The defense had felt great about what they had going. Now they've got to turn their attention to getting it back in that direction. Can they bottle him up again? Because I'd say after that run, confidence is pretty high for him. yard pickup. Well, he appears well on his way to another big game. You remember 2016, partner. He became just the fourth player in NFL history to have three 200-yard rushing games in a season. Two of them were back-to-back. -back. Steelers in week six, Bills in week seven. nowhere losing yardage back at the 22 that's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down 
We always talk about how important speed is in the game of football. Deion Jones may be an undersized middle linebacker, but his speed allows him to get to just about anywhere on the field and make a play. And between he and Keanu Neal, the Falcons took the top two spots in the NFL in terms of rookie tacklers a season ago. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. Second down, Williams. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. The Dolphins on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and eight. Now Cutler. And he checks this one down to Williams. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Whistles and a flag, and I believe a Dolphin got going a little early. False start, offense. So that'll back him up five. Still first down. Play fake here on first down. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to Atlanta right after this timeout. In just two minutes' time, don't forget we'll get you to Orlando for our halftime report. To bring it to you, who else but Larry Ridley? Now that man knows his football. Go get him, Larry. And here comes play number six on this drive. Let's go. Green, 39. Now Cutler to throw on second down. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. Great starting field position here for the offense. A quick give to Coleman. And not much there as he gets it up to about the five-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That's someone who's pretty happy right there. That's the defense coordinator. Body after body getting to him before he can get started. Ryan 
Ryan going to give to Freeman on the draw. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Now the Dolphins are going to halt the action here. It's a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. The Falcons on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and eight. From the gun, it's Ryan. And he is out of bounds, getting it just shy of the 35. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz, made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged because now they know there are going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback. So they got their assignments down pat and kept them away from him. And he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. First down, Ryan. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead, as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. Fresh set of downs here. From the shotgun, Ryan. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Charles, before the broadcast, you and I were talking about a couple of coaching veterans that have their teams right back in the mix again this year. Jim Caldwell with the Lions and Andy Reid with the Chiefs. And I think nationally there wasn't a lot of belief in Jim Caldwell as the head coach of the Lions, despite the fact that they made the playoffs last year. Remember, they lost their last three games of the regular season and snuck in and then got beaten in the playoffs. So people were like, ah, they'll revert back to form. No, they're off to a 3 and one start and playing awfully well on defense. Jim Caldwell deserves the lion's share of credit. See, I need uh, that. Yeah, I got you. I'm Good. with you. <laughs> Andy Reid, on the other hand, has a team that's played well for the last few seasons. The only thing they need to do now is have a deep run into the playoffs, but they've won every which way possible in the early going. Undefeated, they're built for the long haul. I'm going to give you one last one. Sean Payton with the New Orleans Saints. 0-2 mm. for the fourth straight year to start the season. They're now back at 2-2 two and two and playing really, really well, especially on the defensive side of the ball. The Falcons on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 14. Operating from the gun, Ryan. He shakes him off. Broken tackle. He finds Coleman. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Give him 30 yards there. Great patience in the pocket. Of course, it's easy to be patient when the protection's good, and it was. Yeah, you've got to pat those guys on the helmet and say thanks because they gave him plenty of time to stay back there, survey the field, go through the reads that he wanted to, and deliver the ball accurately. That was really well executed. The 
The Falcons averaged 34 points a game last year. Tops in the NFL with that powerful offense. And they're already looking for more here as they've got it first and 10. Now Ryan. Connects with Sanu right side. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. So the offense lining up first and ten. From the red zone now, here's Ryan on first down. Throw left side complete. It's Hardy. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. And remember, he had one blocked earlier. And in his 15th season, he's able to get this one to go. And they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. So this time, the protection holds up for him just fine, and he's able to bang it through. I think their special teams coach got the point across. He gave him a pretty good earful after the block earlier. And this time, there's no penetration, so they're able to pick up three. Sure to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Time running short here. They'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we are at halftime here in Atlanta with the Falcons out in front. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, Brandon, back to you guys in a minute. But first, it's indeed time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Falcons are happy to be sitting in the locker room with the lead. The Dolphins just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. First and 10, Freeman's going to stay inside after the handoff, and nobody can stop him on this long touchdown. Down to late in the first, Cameron Wake here will get to the QB for the sack. This will go for a loss of seven. Freshman throws the pick, pulls in position, and he is the one who comes away with the ball. That'll do it from here in Orlando. Brandon and Charles are standing by for our second half in Atlanta. Brandon.
Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This fielded a few yards into the end zone, and he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. They'll start out on the ground with a Jay. Broke a tackle, but not much room there ultimately. Just up past the 25 and no further. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. Not the start to the drive they were hoping for. That run doesn't get him much at all. No, not at all. That leaves him with third and long, which means you've got to dial up something pretty good. Think your best player with a play that he likes to run best. The Dolphins on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and seven. Play action. It's Cutler. And that is incomplete. And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. The Dolphins will send out the punter now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. Taking it about the 16. Fights through at the five. And oh, a little spin cycle. Room to run now. A terrific return there. 27 yards all told. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Falcons offense it's their first possession of the second half now they have the lead here what well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches what are halftime speeches like for the most part not nearly as emotional they're a lot more clinical every now and then though they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire but in this case let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened they got in there and they said listen Let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, got yeah. we've, got the de we've, got the, we've got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see what the offense gets done. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Just a one-yard pickup on the play, and that'll make it second down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. On second down, here's Ryan. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. 
That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. Well, he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch, and most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet, but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. On third down, Ryan. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. Here's Matt Bosher now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Out of bounds and close. The question, was it a touchback? No. They'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. So now here come the Dolphins. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. And tough starting field position here. Now Cutler back into his end zone. Looking sideline incomplete. Well, not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Second down now after the incompletion. Now a handoff here to his running back. Oh, he's got a little daylight. Jay Ajayi's going to go. He's at the 50, the 30, the 20, 10, and all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Jay Ajayi, 98 yards, and the Dolphins have got it back to a one-score game. And that run massively increased his production in this game, and now he's over 100 yards. And break out your calculator, partner, because his yards per carry went up it's significantly, skyrocketed. right? Big-time jaunt all the way to the end zone. Cody Parkey is on now for the point after. And he puts it through. They're within three. It's 13 to 10. So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And the long run into the end zone. And what a run it was. Here's Parkey now, set to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. 
Yeah, here now come the Falcons. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession. That was punt the football because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. They go play action here on first down. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. And fans, a quick reminder from the NFL after nearly a decade of working together in the fight against breast cancer. This year, the NFL and the American Cancer Society, they're broadening the scope of their efforts to tackle multiple types of cancer. And you can learn more about the expanded Crucial Catch initiative and access the Defender, a new digital tool that provides personalized tips on reducing your cancer risk at NFL.com slash Crucial Catch. And I applaud the NFL for broadening its, its scope here because cancer affects us all in many different ways ways and now everyone will have the ones that they can focus on and be able to support caught on the right side by jones and he takes this one just shy of midfield all the way to the 49 a really good pickup of 28 yards so there on that play offensively they were in the crossing route defense was in zone coverage so as a former db how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver is crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. And he's brought down. 12 more yards there and another first down. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. Wide open receiver complete. Touchdown Falcons. Taylor Gabriel 39 yards and the Falcons will extend their lead. When we draw up defenses on the board we do account for every receiver but on that particular play somehow he was wide open became an easy touchdown pass. Bryant now to tack on the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. A drive there of just four plays. And the Falcons score to cap it off. Sure to kick it away. Now to return it, here's Kenyon Drake. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Jay Ajayi works his way back onto the field. We've seen him be good so far. He's hoping to continue that trend here in quarter number three. And typically when you see guys running it this well, they see the game in slow motion, don't they? They see the cuts happen. They see the blocks happen. They feel really good about their vision. 
And then they use their legs to find that open space. And he's had some good help up front to boot. time to the tailback and he's got a good gain of seven up to the 37 but no matter how they phrase it staying on schedule staying ahead of the sticks whatever you want to call it seven yards on first down that fits the bill second down following the run They go play action now. Cutler. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. Adrian Claiborne in there to drop him. And it'll be a loss of about eight. And partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? The Dolphins on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and ten. Cutler will throw. And it's caught by Parker. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Wow, I can't help it. When I see Jay Cutler throw the football and throw one like that with a big completion, I can't help but be impressed. His arm strength, such an asset. Huh? It really is because it gets him in trouble sometimes, but I think it gets him out of trouble more often than that. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Off the play fake, here's Cutler. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Normally, he's pretty reliable. He usually catches what's thrown to him. On that play, he simply dropped it. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Hey, 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 hey. All right, here we go. Boom, They'll run him now out of the gun. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. One yard, the official pickup there. So it's going to set up third and nine. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? On third down, Cutler fighting through pressure. And he's going to drop this off to Williams, complete. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Call it a gain of three, and that'll bring up fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks, don't let them get there, and they've rallied and made the tackle. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he's on to kick it away. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? 
at about the 18 yard line it looks like. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. And Jones has it over the middle. And that one good for 16 and the drive will continue. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him even if he has an elite defender on him because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. That's caught over the middle, Hooper. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, Boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Six yards here to go for the offense on second down. Here's Ryan to throw. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. That was close to a big play, and just a little bit too far that he was led. He caught it, but couldn't stay in bounds, Charles. Yeah, I'm not very good at these sort of things, but I have to believe the farther you are downfield, the less your margin for error in throwing the ball, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. Yeah, so they gave it a good effort there. Really tried, just couldn't complete it. On third down, it's Coleman. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Call it a gain of three, and it'll bring up fourth down. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. Here's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. on that one and the Dolphins have a first down. I know anytime you watch a team run the ball really well, there's some pinball effect, people bouncing off of each other. There's also some things of beauty in there. We see these nice, explosive, strong runs. And this guy, he knows how to carry the football really well and continually wants the football. Why? He knows the offensive line is going to give him great effort and he gives great effort himself to finish off runs. So the offense has it first and 10. They go play action with Cutler. Pressure brought in and the foul 
Falcons get there for the sack. Adrian Claymore in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. And that's the second sack of the game, but this player, disruptive in all phases, whether he's going upfield, coming underneath, you name it. He's a big-time guy you have to block. to Jay Ajayi there out of the backfield. Third down here. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. The Dolphins on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This will be a tough third and 18. Now Cutler, and Stills over the middle. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. What hallmark of good defenses? It's understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Matt Ryan in the offense heading back onto the field. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader, making sure that you're playing well, and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you're judged. Mm -hmm. How big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agreeing with me, that's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? <laughs> He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. Now a play fake here on first down. He goes underneath to Freeman. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it's a second down. So this brings up a second and two. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out. But a running game can really benefit your team right now. So it'll be first down here after the run. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Falcons. They've got the football. They've got the lead as we get set to start the fourth. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Play action, Ryan. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it, Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. Off 
Offense still needing 10 yards. Second down. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. And Freeman lost the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. All I can say about this play is that someone's living right. I mean, he's trying to gain yardage, trying to get upfield. Ball comes free. What's that panic that we've talked about oftentimes that you feel when you yeah, lose the ball? You can sense it. Oh, you can sense it. And somehow he got to it and was able to recover for his squad. So here we go, first and ten now. Now Ryan. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. The Pro Bowl wideout Julio Jones is intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Out routes are always timing routes. And if the timing's off just a little bit, it can really throw off a play. It looked like he led him a little too much there. Yeah, there was a fraction of a second because he caught it, just couldn't stay in bounds. A handoff, Devontae Freeman. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Here's Ryan. And this is going to be incomplete. Really nice play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball, but for the guys on the offensive line, they're doing a nice job of trying to protect their passer. But when a guy hops in the air and goes airborne to try and knock one away, it's difficult because you can't reach out and grab him. That'll be a holding penalty. So all you're trying to do is make some type of a play on him, make some type of contact to try and get his arms out of the sky. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he was very fortunate there to get out of his end zone. He maybe got back to the two-yard line. No gain on the play there. Second down. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively. Because I remember playing in these spots, and my coaches always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. And to give this time to the tailback. Ojai hit. He lost the football. And the Falcons say they have it. They do. Brandon, I don't want to violate any of our broadcasting rules by declaring a game over before it's over. But that one, that puts them in real jeopardy there. Absolutely. It was a two-possession game. It is a two-possession game. At this stage in the fourth, they needed points out of that drive. And obviously now no chance at all to get those points that they so desperately needed. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And you know, their previous possession, they were able to move the football that still wound up punting in the end. You know, in 2016, Carolina had a 20-play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes. And remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one maybe not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. the fumble recovery. It's Ryan. And it's caught. 
And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. 11 yards for number 11. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. Now, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. They're right there at the one. No gain, but don't let that stop you. Line back up and keep going at them. If I'm them, I'm thinking about going at it four straight times. Second and goal. Defense digging in again here. And he will not only not get the yard he needed, he goes the wrong direction. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. And this offense on third down today, they're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. They're looking at a third and goal here. From the gun, it's Ryan. And this is caught for a Falcon touchdown. Mohamed Sanu from four yards out. And the Falcons use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. Oh, such great concentration there, going right up against the side of the end zone, but able to get the feet in bounds. There are so many things that go into that catch, and you just mentioned the concentration, being able to catch the football, get your feet down in bounds, hang on to it all the way through the process of the catch. That was a phenomenal play. And there's going to be a stoppage here. The booth wants to take another look at this potential touchdown. Bryant for the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. Just a four-play drive that time. And the end result, an Atlanta touchdown. to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now here's the Falcons defense getting set to go again. Forced the fumble last time up on the scoreboard. Things going their way. Things are rocking easy now, and they feel good about themselves, confident, taking the ball away in the last possession. They're going to try and do it again. So let me ask you, can you be playing free, and that can be good, or it can also become bad, right? I, I like the way you put it. You're exactly right. It can work both ways. Sometimes you get too loose and give up big plays and not handle your responsibilities. But oftentimes when you're playing free and easy and locked in, as they hard today, you see the end result. 
They'll throw on first down with Cutler. On the left side, this is Stills. The completion good for three, and it's second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Second down, here's Cutler. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. The Dolphins on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and seven. Now Cutler. And that is incomplete. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. He's going to wind up and air it out. And that's caught inside the 35. A big play there for the Dolphins. 39 yards. What a throw right there for the first down. He has taken some real punishment in this game, but still standing in the pocket completing that one. He's a flat-out warrior. There's no question about that. How about him stepping up into the teeth of the rush and delivering there for that big strike and that big pickup? and 10. It's Cutler. The Fasano here brings it in. And he gets it down to the 32. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch. Inbounds. Keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. and a flag, and I believe a Dolphin got going a little early. And that'll set him back five. Still second down. Second down and a little ways to go here. Second and 13. Color to throw again. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? <laughs> Offense needs 11. Have to think pass here on third down. <laughs> Throwing again, it's Cutler. Gonna be taken down. Cutler sacked. Adrian Claymore able to disrupt yet another pass play. His third sack of the afternoon. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. 
Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Now whistles and a flag, and I believe a Dolphin got going a little early. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Still fourth down. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's going to loft one deep left side here. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Jarvis Landry, 48 yards. And the Dolphins are able to draw a bit closer. Wow, talk about a big fourth down conversion for the score defensively. How do you let that happen? I think you start with the offense and you give them credit for going for and having that type of, well, let's face it, audacity. But defensively, I think you're right on target, partner. There's no way something like that's supposed to happen in that situation. You're supposed to be able to shut that down and get the ball back for your own team. Instead, they give up not just a big play, but a touchdown. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. Here's Parkey now, set to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Freeman here to begin the drive. And not much. Maybe a yard up to the 29. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. Freeman again. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. And that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball. But I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. They run the play fake to Coleman. Now Ryan. And the Dolphins. 
Brands rush gets home. Down he goes. Andre Branch in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other, and they just locked people down. There's Matt Bosher now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And it'll be Dolphin football. Jarvis Landry and company heading back onto the field now. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. On first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. He got 29 yards that time. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Out of the gun, it's Cutler. They dump off underneath to Ajayi. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Give him seven on the play, and it'll make it second down. Second down now after the pass completion. Got a little throw. They set up the screen to a J. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. Call that a loss of five yards on the play. And that'll bring up a third down. Now that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize that it's broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try to pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. Again, it's Cutler. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off at the 39, and they are going to set up sharp at the 40-yard line. Well, you're trailing. It's the fourth quarter, and you've got to throw the football. But the defense knows this, too. So they're just going to sit back, bring in an extra defensive back or two, the old nickel or dime strategy, Brandon, and wait for you to put that bad boy up for grabs. And this one winds up being intercepted. And back onto the field now comes Devontae Freeman. And we have seen a decline in the numbers. Where does the fault lie? Just him? Maybe the guys up front combination? Well, as you and I both know, it's almost always a collective deal. But in this case, I think maybe the offensive line got a little overconfident. They had blocked so well in the first half, picked up on what the defense was doing. I think we've seen an adjustment now that they have not picked up on. And now they're being a little bit overwhelmed. He's been busy today. 
A beautiful spin and room to run. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. Fresh set of downs here. It's Freeman trying to run inside, but nothing there. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. looking to avoid a third and long at second and ten. A 20th carry now for Freeman. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. And whistles and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. to gain is the 33 on third down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. So with that miss, Charles, you have to figure their fate. It might be sealed. Yeah, you needed two scores. So you take the field goal first and then worry about getting the ball back. But that may not matter now. The Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. It's Cutler. To the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it. But he is able to keep the feet in bounds. 
He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be second and 11. That was well defended, and while it was a completion, it resulted in a loss of yardage. It's really, really hard for a running back to think to himself, I probably should have just dropped it and saved the yardage. It goes against the entire training that he's had his whole career. Here we go now. Three, 19. Ah! Cutler to throw. To the right side here, the tight end, Thomas. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. That catch good for five. It's third down. Here's Cutler. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Brooks Reed in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. Here we go. It's Cutler on fourth down. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about Slim and none? Well, Slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. down to none? Yes, exactly right. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Getting down to the end here, they have a two-score lead. Barely, but it's a two-score lead, so that probably makes you as a coach feel a lot more comfortable right now, doesn't it, Charles? It does, but it doesn't mean now you go out and run option or some kind of wild double reverse or anything like that. But you do know that if anything does go haywire, you're still in control of this game. I want a double reverse, don't you? <laughs> I'm just waiting for that day where we actually see something like that in this situation. Well, we'll see what happens here. The Falcons in victory formation as they take a knee. This one up. And barring something unforeseen, this will be the last play of the game. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Falcons here as we say so long from Atlanta.